Hello there, everybody. Welcome to another episode. <laughs> another episode of URC <laughs> Unloaded. Uh, myself, um, of course, got Tom Shanklin and John Barkley. Well, how are you keeping, lads? Do you want to do that again, or? Well, how are you That's keeping? Why we do lads? rehearsals. This is why um, I'm good. Um, let's just take a let's just take a moment to appreciate John's new haircut. Yeah, no comments earlier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Happy yeah. yeah. Happy. It's okay. Looking good. John, you must yeah. have been spending some time with the family because you've been very quiet on social media. That's it. Quiet time, family time. That's what I'm all about, Stevie. So uh, quiet, quiet season now, but building back up again. There'll be some posts coming soon. Don't worry. Shanks, what have you been up to? Keeping the head down? Work, mate. Just work. Just studying stats. See who can qualify for the Shield, who can qualify for the top eight. Um, <laughs> just keeping out of trouble, but playing golf tomorrow in Wentworth. I'm just going to get that oh, in lovely. really early. So, lovely. who's the winner? Well, best of luck with that. Um, boys, we're delighted, as always, to be joined by a coach. This week, it's head coach of Monster, and it's Johan Van Gran. Um, he's just going to pop up on screen now. Johan, thank you so much for joining us tonight, uh, giving us a bit of your time. My line of questioning middle of last week was probably going to be slightly different to what it is now after the big result um, against Ulster. But how proud are you of the performance? Um, against Ulster and more importantly over the last couple of weeks because it's been a pretty tough couple of weeks. No, thanks guys. Uh, thanks for, um, for having me on the show. Just uh, Shanks, I played my first uh, round of golf in a year today. Uh, muscle memory oh. was pretty good. So putting was atrocious, thanks, but the driver still works. So enjoy tomorrow. <laughs> um, Did you win? Did you win? Uh, we played a bit of skins. Uh, we were free ball. Nice. I did in last. Um, but uh, still, still pretty good golf, um, so not too bad. Um, you, what's your handicap, you on? Uh, uh, a real 18, uh, not a 19, oh, but a 17. Under the 18 <laughs> handicap. Yeah, good partner to have. Oh. Good partner to have on 18. <laughs> Shot hole. How easy is that? So what about your What about your boys at the weekend, Johan? Obviously, very proud of the performance. Really tough place to go in Belfast to get a result. Um, you no, know, I was I was I was working the game and. I was surprised just about, you know, Ulster's lack of intensity in that first half, but you really capitalised on that uh, and, you know, your defence was unreal throughout the evening. Yeah, look, I'm very, very proud of the of the lads um, in terms of the, the way that we played. Uh, we knew that we needed to be good in, in all areas of our game. Uh, Ulster's got a fantastic set piece, specifically their mall. Um, we also knew that we were going to get good conditions, so we need to attack them. And uh, we knew there was going to be an 80-minute 80, 80 uh, performance needed because uh, both sides were sitting pretty in, in the log. Um, but one one defeat at this stage can can put you right down to, to seventh or eighth place. Um, they are a team that, um, you know, we, we haven't managed to win there in a few years. And... Um, we felt um, that uh, you know we we've been playing good rugby for the last three weeks, and uh, we were confident going up there. And um, you know there was a lot of talk about um, you know the quarterfinal, uh, but um, we kind of said three weeks ago after the Leinster game that this is going to be a, a big game for us in in the context of um, of qualifying and and potentially getting a, a home quarterfinal. So very proud of the group. But just on that, it's big game after big game after big game at the minute. I know you've got Cardiff. That's not such a big game, is it, Chanks? But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, looking ahead, and I know you're probably a coach that takes every game at a time, but how do you manage the squad Like at this time of the season when all the games are nearly a, a must-win? Well, of course, when you get to the knockouts, they are a win. Is it about playing your best team each week now going forward? Is, is that the way you're kind of looking at it? Is there a, a window of opportunity to, to rest a couple of your big guys? Will that be this week again against Cardiff? No, look, I think it's 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 not a perfect science, but the most important thing is that you manage your squad, and that's what we've done the whole season. We, we've played 60 players across Europe and, and the URC. So for us, it's incredibly important to you know manage between game time, between winning games, and then you know, also making sure that we reward performances. Um you know, so over over the coming weeks, we'll, we'll keep rotating in certain positions. Obviously, we've got a bit of continuity going uh, since that Leinster game. Uh, you know, we we haven't had the guys from the Six Nations. Um, 
No, but in saying that, we, we've picked up a, a lot of big injuries in, in the, the last four weeks um, in terms of guys that haven't been available. And, and the fact that, uh, you know, we, we took quite a young squad to South Africa um, and, um, you know, guys are, are being rewarded for good performances. So uh, on Cardiff on, on the weekend, uh, they are such a dangerous side. Um, the game in the Rainbow Cup, um, we literally had to defend for 24 phases, the last play of the game to keep them out. Um, you know, and, and we scored a, a try in the 73rd minute to go ahead. So we've got a lot of respect for them. Um, our last few games against them have been pretty close and we're sure it's going to be the same. And, you know, the fact that they play on a 4G and we're going to Cork uh, on, on Friday evening to, to go back to the 4G, we, we love playing there. But uh, the change of surface definitely makes a difference and we expect a very quick game. Johan, all the talk at this time of year is around uh, the teams which are peaking um, and they're peaking at the right time. And arguably you'd put Munster in that bracket at the moment, especially with the performances in Europe and at the weekend. I always wonder, as a, as a coach, is that something you, you plan to create in terms of your, your training structures and your training loads and your resting players? Or does it just happen through momentum built through the year? Look, I think it's certainly something that that you that you plan for. Uh, that's why you've got a got to have a good medical team and a good athletic performance team. Your, your coaching staff needs to be aligned, and that we certainly are. And then you need a playing group that that needs to buy in, and, and they have. Um, you know, it, it's it's also you know uh, looking at at what you see and then trusting that what you see is the right call. Like, for instance, last week after that extra game. We played Leinster, Exeter, Exeter, and, and I saw that that took a lot out of us. And uh, we only came in on Tuesday morning. We trained once, and uh, you know, after the session, I, I said to the group, "You've got to trust that what we did in the previous 44 weeks, that'll be good enough for a performance on, on Friday night." And you know, uh, and and it was. So it's it's about finding the balance. Uh, John, there's there's no perfect science to it. I think yeah, we as coaches would love to say, "Oh." We got that spot on, uh, but you've, you've got to trust your gut. And, um, you know, we're, we're in a good place. We're alive in both competitions. Um, obviously looking forward to the Toulouse game in two weeks' time. But um, as um, I said at the start of, of the URC, the fact that the four South African teams are on the competition now, it's, it's going to change the complexity of this competition. The fact that you've got to go down south. Um, when I was part of the Bulls, obviously you go east and west to Argentina and Australia New Zealand. Uh, but the, but the condition specifically is going to be such a huge factor in this competition, and, and I'm so glad it turned out to be that way. And what a fantastic competition to be involved in the fact that you know nine teams are vying for eight different positions, and and nothing are set in stone with with two rounds to play. Yeah, Johan, um, Joey Carberry, I thought was excellent against Exeter. Peter Armani, I think, one man of the match, but he was just as good. Um, Brilliant again, I, I, I thought against Ulster. Is he the next? Is he the next Irish Jedi? Is he taking over from Obi Wan Sexton? Is this the guy that's finally going to take the ten jersey? Do you think in Irish look, colours? Look, um, I I wouldn't want to get involved in Irish selection. I think Faz has done a, a fantastic <laughs> job. Um, what I would say, Shanks, is uh, when when I met Joey for the first time a few years ago. Um, I saw something different. I saw mm. a calmness. I saw magic in his play, and I saw somebody that wants to achieve. And I saw uh, an incredible human being. And uh, you know, unfortunately, he, he got injured, and he got injured again. He went through a tough time, uh, but he's he's been phenomenal for us on and off the pitch. And um, I take you back to the Gloucester game in uh, round five of Europe a few years ago when we beat Gloucester away on a Friday evening. He was phenomenal, and I think he's, he's back to that sort of form. He's quiet, he's confident, and he's leading us forward. And together with that, we've got good competition within our squad. Uh, the fact that Ben Healy is playing really good rugby. Uh, I take you back to five weeks ago, our performance against Benetton when Ben Healy started. You know, guys are pushing pushing each other, and um, mm. you know, just, just glad that Joe is back to top form. Yeah, is there how much more to come, do you think, is there from him? Because, as I said, over the last... So two, three weeks, he's been brilliant. Yeah, I'd, I'd say his best is yet to come. Um, mm. He's a guy that's achieved a lot at a young age. 
gone through a difficult time on and off the pitch in terms of um, his body. Um, but uh, he's gonna he's gonna do a lot for Manchester in the coming years. Um, but the most important is what he does over the next few weeks and um, is in a good headspace and he's playing really well and really looking forward to to see how it goes in the, over the next few weeks. Johan, just just a quick and a general one from me. Um, you coached um, in South Africa, and I always think the likes of Munster, the the expectation of success must have been. Quite similar. And I always compare. I was watching a documentary on Liverpool. The matter of the team they had, there's an expectation of success from the fans. How do players and coaching staff deal with that expectation? And is it sometimes do you find it a burden or do you find it a motivator? I suppose I'm asking. Uh, when uh, when I got the Manchester job, um, uh, uh, Jean de Villiers phoned me, and um, the first thing that he said to me is, um, uh, "There's massive expectation." And it's something that I've embraced. It's something that that uh, we at Munster embrace, because if you don't embrace it, then then why are you at Munster Rugby? It's a it's a phenomenal club. We've got an incredible supporters base, uh, and they love the team. And uh, if you want to be part of the top clubs in in not only European rugby but world rugby, that's what's expected of you. Uh, the the final last season was a was a big disappointment because we we came so close and so close and and yet so far. But that drives you on, and that's that's why we're in sport, <coughs> and that's why we're in rugby is is embracing pressure and embracing expectation, and that's something that we as a group are are very aware of. But um, you can't see it as a burden. Um, you've got to enjoy it, and uh, it's been a very enjoyable season. Uh, some incredible things have happened. Uh, that, that time when we got stuck in South Africa, uh, coming back from that and, you know, the way that guys performed, uh, going back to South Africa. And we're now in the business part of the season. And, uh, you know, that's where you want to be. And uh, like I said, we're, we're alive in, in both competitions and, and really looking forward to it. Johan, last question before we'll let you go. And I know you've covered this. We're not going to go over old ground. You're moving on with Bath next season. I'm sure it was a very difficult decision for you to leave Munster, but obviously Graham Rowntree has been appointed as, as the head coach. How happy are you to see him step in and, and try and fill your boots and take Munster forward a, in a similar direction? No, look, incredibly happy for him. Um, he's a top man. Um, when I phoned him a few years ago to Ask him if he would come for an interview at Munster Rugby. Um, he said yes straight away. We coached uh, against each other at uh, national level. Uh, uh, we had a beer together for the first time after the third test in, in 2012 um, when it was South Africa against England in, in Port Elizabeth. And we kind of stayed in touch and had a huge respect for each other. Um, uh, he's a Dead, honest guy, uh, phenomenal coach. If you look at uh, what he did with England and and the Lions, and you know he he loves Munster, and um, you know we as a coaching group have, have enjoyed each other's company over the last three years, and we intend to to keep going till the the 30th of June when when I officially leave, and uh, you know really looking forward to to what uh, Graham can do going forward at, at Munster Rugby. And, now, one of the, the first things that Keith Hill said to me um, when I joined Munster is you, you know that you can never go to another Irish side, you're part of Munster now. And I think <laughs> that's the brilliant thing of, of, uh, of Munster rugby is, is once you, you're part of it, you'll, you'll always be part of it. And I've genuinely loved every minute of it. And uh, I'm so proud to be part of this club and so proud to be part of a, a team that, that always stands up and fights and um, so proud to be part of a a supporter group that uh, sometimes you don't perform up to expectation, but they're back there the next weekend. And uh, from from uh, that point of view, great to be coaching with Wig and uh, wishing him the very best from the 1st of July onwards. Well, Johan, thanks very much for your time. I know we've kept you an extra couple of minutes there, but really appreciate it. We wish you all the very best for the remainder of the season and in the next couple of years at Bath. But uh, thanks one again, once again for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks, gentlemen. Have a have a great evening. Pleasure to be talking with you guys. Good luck with golf, all right? Nice one. <laughs> Bet you wish you played for months now, Stevie, didn't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, he's a nice guy. Well, his, his answers are a hell of a lot longer 
on something more relaxed than this because like pre-match I think I've maybe interviewed him once maybe a couple of years ago he's always very sharp and specific in his pre-match and post-match answers so it's good actually to to get him relaxed and, and chat a wee bit more openly about Munster but um, he's very passionate about it, about Munster like which is great to see yeah, it's a brilliant team brilliant team and what about a good what, season massively, you massively in Europe as well aren't they? you watched them at the weekend Shanks you watched them beat Ulster obviously yeah, yeah, watched a bit of that. I mean, you're probably better to describe this game because you were commentating on it, weren't you? Or were you not? Um, no, I was, it was in studio. Was in studio. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Ma, our, our, our Paul was commentating, wasn't he? Right. Our Paul, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Young Marshy was, uh, yeah, was commentating. I'll tell you what, lads. I was walking out of the, the ground, Kingspan, after the Toulouse defeat. Obviously, Ulster got knocked out of the European Cup. And a yeah. couple of the Ulster players, I was hanging around for ages, chatting to a few friends that went to the match. And there was Ulster players walking past me and, like, they were, you know, on you. absolutely yeah. devastated. Like, devastated, just at an all-time low. And then a few people that were in the change room come out and said to me, oh, Stevie, it's like, that's the worst I've ever seen it in the, in, in the dressing room. And I was like, flip an heck. And then when they come out against Munster, they sort of, you could just tell that they were deflated, that they, they weren't at it, their physicality wasn't there, they were slightly off the pace, and Monster, fair play to them, took huge advantage of it, mm. um, and just got stuck into him defensively, very sound, Dale Ende, you know, he, you know we're usually seeing Stuart McCluskey talking yeah. about Stuart McCluskey getting gain in line every week, and Dale Ende yeah. you know, made him look like a, um, a URC player, like he, he, he was so so good, and you know Keith Earls does what he does, finishes off. Chris Farrell was everywhere, former Ulster player, and up great front, angle for the Earls try, wasn't it from Farrell? Yeah, terrible pass in the end, but yeah, it was, wasn't uh, it? Yeah, <laughs> right down by his knees. Yeah, a bit of a dead duck, like, but um, yeah, Munster thoroughly deserved it, and JB, you know Dan McFarland better than than I do, obviously working with him in Scotland, but. He was very, very honest in his post-match interview, saying Munster deserved it. They were the much better side. They were better at us. Uh, I think it was the mall, really. It was the only thing that Ulster had the upper hand. But he looked absolutely like down in the dumps. Is he the type of person that you know will be able to pick himself up? Because if his body language is giving off this you know, really low impression, that's going to surely rub off on the lads. Yeah, a couple of things. Dan's, uh, again, I, I wrote him a couple of years. Dan's for me, one of the most uh, technically and sort of tactically astute coaches, but a kind of modern day coach that also looks at the whole picture. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have put it down to that. But you're, I, I was following the game online originally. I watched it back and I, and I saw it was eighteen three at one point. I, I assumed, I wrongly assumed it was at Munster. And when I watched it back, like you said, they were just, they were just flat. And I thought this is yeah. the pink span. You know, a couple of games to go, opportunity for Munster, and they just seem to forget all. The parts of it, and I don't know, like if you're saying it goes back to the game the week before, and they're they're flat from that, but it's the business end of the season. You know, they've yeah. been leapfrog. They're gonna they're gonna they, they've got a tough run in. They're gonna potentially they got Edinburgh away this week, and then this and then the Sharks. Who it's it's not unthinkable to think they don't win either of those games, and they'll slip right down the log. And then where are they? So yeah, I was surprised. There's a chance they there's a chance they could not make the top eight. Isn't it? Yeah, it was a good. Yeah. No, no, yeah, I mean, a, long, a long shot, but I'd say, but yeah, well, a long shot, Shanks. But I don't, I don't think it's the top eight. That's the it's the worry. It's making European rugby next season because obviously the yeah. winners of the Shields. Yeah, and if you win the, win the Shield, it's it's probably going to be Ospreys or Scarlets that win the Welsh Shield, and mm. then Ulster could be that team that drop out if they get nothing. You would back you would back them to get a point or two over the next couple of weeks and make sure that they are safe going into Europe. But the way this season's gone. Um, especially over the last couple of weeks, that they're definitely picking at the wrong time. But anyway, we'll move on. Stormers. Well, there's no shame in losing. There's no shame in losing the monster mind. You know, it's not. I hope really. the man. I think it's the man of the reason. I, I would just say that there was a kind of. Again, I don't like to always go back to referees, but I, I, it's one of these kind of. It's probably I probably should save save this for the rant section, but when uh, Reedy scores that try at the end, and the refs give an advantage after multiple infringements of the mob. They should go back and give the sin bin, even if they score a try. Munster yeah. and then go down to 13 players. And then I think, I, I, would they have gone on and won? But it's something that I always think there's, there's very few refs that go back and do that. And I'm not entirely sure of the, of 
the laws on that. But I think that would have been a what could have been a big momentum swing. And it was Keith Earls as well. I think Keith Earls came in from the the side of that mall and potentially could have got yellow carded. It just felt, JB, I, I wasn't at the stadium, but it was so flat. The crowd weren't so getting behind the lads. Like it just it just felt that Munster maybe had another gear, uh, and they definitely showed that in, in in the first half. But hopefully they go away. You and I are both on the Edinburgh game this weekend, which should be an absolute cracker because both teams could do with a win. But uh, moving on to Stormers Glasgow, JB, you have a huge interest in that one at the weekend. You thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed the game, yeah. Um, did you? I genuinely did. I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my neck on the block here. Not this is not necessary. I put my neck on the block because they're second to the table. I, I, I can't see... It wouldn't be a big surprise to me if Stormers won the whole competition because of the way they're playing the game. And even they did, they played pretty average for the first half and then they, they scored 37 unanswered points. Mm. Yeah. Like, the way they... The power they have, and we can get on to the, the other teams... South African teams later, but some of the players they've got, you know, Gallant, um, LeBoc, Sanatla, the top try scorer, like the way they're playing the game on a hard track now. If they get home quarterfinal semifinals, I was trying to Bob Skins that. He said, if there's a, if they get a home draw, he reckons they'll sell out that stadium. And this I, was I, the I worst can't... try. Yeah. I mean, the, the kick from a Glasgow yeah. point of view, I and mean, that's a kick chase, there's a four on one overlap from a kick chase. This guy was quality. Diamani yeah. in the back row. He was involved for a couple of the tries. Mm. Um, but through the team, you just, they just got big performers through the team, and they really, they really, they got going. They got physical. They, you know, they, they got a bit of a rocket off John Dobson at halftime. I'd say, but the way they played the game in the, in the second half was 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 quality. Like this, this is a brilliant try. You, you take your half for that. But yeah, Glasgow are poor. Um, we've seen a couple of times this season where. They don't things don't don't go their way, and then it kind of can unravel, and that that happened uh, here. Big game for them, and it unraveled from, and they've got an even tougher game this week against the Bulls up at altitude. So, yeah, I'm not sure, not sure where Glasgow are currently. Leboc is a class player. I love yeah. this player guy. Player. This guy is unreal. Yeah. Did you, see Razi, did you see Razi? Did you see Razi Rasmus tweet? He tweet. He tweet. <laughs> yeah. Did you see I that? that? No. What did he do? He uh, he said, "What did he say, uh, Ruse? Um, I never doubted you or something. Keep up the yeah, unbelievable the play. Great way to show, great way to get over your disappointment, or something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, but because he didn't select him for the South Africa squad, he put out a tweet to like pick him up. <laughs> so yeah, it was my plan all along. It was, it was plan all along, but um, yeah, that that wasn't really a close game, but a close game, flip an egg." John, talk to me about what happened in Edinburgh against Zebra. What uh, what on earth happened? It was crazy. Mate, you could see it happening. I mean, pre-game, all we're saying is 50 points. Zebra, they're, they're a disgrace to the league. <laughs> 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 Not forward and they're winning. You know, it's 26-all with uh, a play to go. Edinburgh were dire. Um, and Mike Blair, to be fair, he admitted that after the game. He did, yeah. They just weren't out of the races, and he, he and fair play to him again. He said they deserved uh, Zebra deserved to win to win the game. So, but I found myself cheering uh, cheering Zebra in the game. The way they were playing, and this is a, the, what them. about this tackle? Oh, oh God! Mate. Oh, mate. I mean that was that's, Mac I mean, that's Mackay, is it? Uh, no, that that was uh, Glenn Young. Uh, got yeah. done there. But this, I mean, look at this for a Zebra can play. This is the tries they scored were genuinely quality tries. You know, they weren't like scrappy tries. They scored some real good. He, he was class all game. Um, Faschetti was good. The big players were good. Um, then Edinburgh got a guy sent off in the 30th minute. You thought, here we go. Uh, yeah. Marshall Sykes got sent off for just a ridiculous clear out, to be honest. Unnecessary. But they, they were good. I genuinely was gutted they didn't win the game. It's probably um, the best I've seen them play all season because they, they try and play like this every single week and it doesn't quite happen. This, guy, this guy I know Simone Gessi I was like who is this guy and he's <laughs> he's the Italian week. Matthew he's the Italian Matthew Morgan is what he is he's <laughs> just, he looks and runs like him but they were good they were was, you know you always you always yeah. want Zebra to be all right but they're going to make a ton of mistakes yeah they just didn't they're going to lose the ball they're going to lock they it do and I mean, I like I, said, I was cheering them. I don't, I don't mind. I was, you could hear me on the mic. I, I was properly hoping they were going to win the game because I think they deserved it. But 
Edinburgh found a way to win. Um, realistically, looking at that, if you're going to have a bad game, have it against Zebra. And yeah. That sounds horrible, yeah. but and again, you're going to get a reaction this week against Ulster. But again, yeah, the, the Edinburgh climb up the table, I think. And so, good time to have a bad performance, put it that way. Uh, Mike Blair said when he was chatting to you, John about like the X Factor players that Zebra had and like yeah. that they all played really well and, and his team didn't. Like, I, I, I just haven't seen anything like that from Zebra all season. They're just every time they touch the ball, they look like they were going to make a line break, make something happen. So, um, yeah, ridiculous performance. Uh, Dragons, we're going to move on. We'll have to talk about the Dragons again. Um, Shanks, they got their first away win last weekend and then they backed it up with a, um, a uh, pretty poor last 15, 20 minutes. Sorry, second, they beat second Con- win. Yeah, they beat Connor ages ago, didn't they? Seems yeah. like a lifetime ago. Um, yeah, did really well last week against the Dragons. They were really physical. They looked like they wanted it a little bit more. And Jack Dixon was brilliant last week, one man of the match. But this week, back to same old Dragons, really. Started, started off okay. Um, but I, I, this is a turnover ball here. And Angus O'Brien ends up scoring a try from it. But it was shown twice on replay. And for the TMO not to pick it up, I mean, it's really good into Lincoln play. Angus O'Brien hits a great line. Wheels. I'd question. I'd question Jordan Williams and how much he wants to get across. You yeah, know, good yeah. 15s cover the cover the ball a lot more. But that's a knock on. It's it's knocked on first by the Dragons. It's knocked on second by Ryan Elias. Yeah. I mean, we saw it loads of times as well on the replays, but not to pick that out. But didn't really matter too much. Um, you know, in, are the, are in the, the Scarlets game. going to make a late charge, Shanks? Are they? Yeah, yeah, I think they will. I think they will. A big game for them this weekend um, against the Ospreys, but but they they were good. Like they, they were quite physical. Rob Evans scored a, a nice try. Um, he's sort of been out in the wilderness a fair bit, but the Dragons were in it really till mm-hmm. the last sort of fifteen minutes, and then with fifteen to go, that was it really. The, the foot come off the gas. Scarlets. Were there any opportunity? They were there. Reese Patchell throws a lovely miss pass down the right side, as does Johnny Williams. And yeah, you, know, you blink, and all of a sudden, then it's nineteen thirty-eight. Um, yeah. And you know, you think we sit. We must be fifteen minutes ago. I think the Dragons were leading by two points. It's just a yeah. massive switch off with the last fifteen minutes. So they're still looking for their first home win. Yeah. Can you believe they must it? have. They must have stopped being the best version of themselves in the last twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Dixon, when Jack Dixon scores, and I uh, tried and was good again. Like he's, I'm not trying to hype him up to say he's going to play for Wales or anything like that. But you know, you've got to give credit where credit's due. And he, for the last couple of games for the Dragons, he's really stood up, um, as has Ben Fry, as well. But you know, just just physical, just getting over the game line, giving them front football. But they just make too many errors. Here's a thought, and again, it might be wrong, but I was reading this today in the paper that they're looking, talking about the salary cap in England, and Rob Baxter was, you know, this getting brought down, isn't it, after the back of COVID, and Rob Baxter saying that all the Welsh reasons uh, run off a higher budget than Exeter. So, is that is that also marquee players though as well? Because no, I know there's marquee no. players. It really been, they've got two, two marquee players. Is that what you can sign? Yeah, I think it is. Is it back and one? Make is, the, is the funding is the funding's point? This look, we could spend a whole point, a whole we could spend days talking about the sort of structural issues or gra- whatever it is. But I just think recruitment wise, it's a tough sell. We spoke about that with Dean Ryan trying to get people to recruit to, to the Dragons, but there has to be more to it than just that. Is the point I'm trying to make? You know, you're 19, yeah. 17 up with 17, 18 minutes to play, whatever it is. You've not won a game at home all year. I mean that's you're you're in the you're but in the you've got, you've, then. But yeah. you've also got some like internationals on the field as well. Yeah. You know, so you've, you've got, got experience. You've got guys who know it, but, but it's just it's confidence. You know, you you drag if the dragons are off um you know on a five game winning streak, you know, they're the types of games that you you'll end up being able to finish off. But when you're ser- still searching with the pressure on you for a home win. They're it's booking their summer holidays, don't they? Really? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they are. The they're down the league. They're, they're not qualifying for Europe. They're not even close to top eight. You know, they're mm. the dreadful season for them. 
Scarlet, oh, Scarlet, Scarlet is alright though, and I think Scarlet's have got Ospreys away next, and then Stormers to finish. Scar Scarlet's always yeah. played well at the end of the season, you know, dry track. They don't have the biggest pack, and they'll always do well. Johnny Williams played really well. Foxy played well, and they've got a, a mobile pack. Rob Evans is back. Yeah. Josh McLeod is back, which was good to see after. Laos is playing well. well. Callum Afosi is playing well. well. So yeah. the, they, they could, I just can't see them. I think they need to win both of those to to creep into the top eight, I think. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think, But the big the biggest thing for them is the Shield at the moment. So they've got the Ospreys this weekend. Yeah. If, they yeah. beat, if they beat the Ospreys, they're going to finish top of of the Shield. So, they, yeah, they've had a really good late run into the season. Shanks, we, we were talking about Cardiff possibly winning that Shield about six weeks ago after they beat yeah. Leinster at home. And we were like, you know, this is a turning point. You know, their nightmare trip away to South Africa, the ties to Toulouse, you know, they're playing all these um, all these young players and lads who are being brought in. And then it's, I know you're you're probably closer to, to die young than a lot of people, but it's just been an absolute disaster of a season for them, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. The, the, the killer blow was the two Scarlets games, home and away, lost them both, and that sort of effectively ended their their season. Any hopes of qualifying top eight or finishing top of the shield. So they had a bit of momentum as well, really, you know, up Glasgow and Leinster, two big wins. Um, but yeah, th that was it really. And I mean, they weren't great at the weekend. It was six nil at half time. It, it, I went to the game. I watched the game as a, as a fan and they were just out muscled. Really. They were, Ospreys were far more physical. Cardiff have got a good team. Um, and in certain areas they look good, but, when your set piece is creaking and when your scrum's going backwards, when you're getting driven off the park with the line out, you know, it, it just, it, it's hard work. A, a big, a big turning point in the game was the Reese Webb intercept. Um, Cardiff is still in it. And, it, it, you know, this is a pretty telegraphed intercept. You know, if Reese Priestland throws it, but he's right in vision there. You know, that it's a, it's poor, really, if you think about it, because the ball's not in there. It's not a long pass. The ball's not in there for a, lot, uh, for a large amount of time. He's just a lapse of concentration. And fair play to Reese Webb. He, he was excellent again, as he always is, and as he has been this season. Just little snipes picking and going. Um, this was a key instance of the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the anti-tackle. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, and front peel. A front move, what you wouldn't call it appeal, would you? But it's really well done. They've looked at it and they've they've seen that Cabango is defending on the short side. You get Parry running at him. There's only really going to be one winner. So they were just clinical. I, I don't think. I think in phase play attack, they still look a little bit lost, but doesn't really matter too much as long as their set piece functions as well as that. Yeah, I, I think Cardiff, like Da Young said, nightmare season. Like they play on that artificial surface, and it's interesting hearing uh, Johan van Grande talking about the different approaches. And coaches are aware of it. You'd expect them to be better on that surface because the reality is when they go away to play on grass, middle of winter, play against the big South Africans, they're not going to compete with them with the pack they have now. Mm. Uh, the guys they're signing next year, and Falatau and, and Thomas Young, they're unbelievable. They're as well. But they're yeah. not. They're not signing power. They, they need to bulk and they need to get more power to that team to put themselves in games. Yeah, I think so. I think I think front row and, and second row massively. Um, I think they've got a good back row. It's a, it's a mobile back row. There's not yeah. loads of power. So you need, you need power somewhere. Um, but they, they, they're stuck in it really because the, the players took a lot of pay cuts through COVID, but their contracts were extended. So it's a difficult situation where Dai wants to mould his squad and he wants to bring new players in release new players as every coach does, but he's got them for another year now because of, of what went on during COVID where all players, you know, had to take less money, but on the basis that their jobs are secure for an extra year. So it, it is really difficult because I, I look at it and like someone like Halla Hollow is a massive miss for Cardiff. Huge because he's the, he's the point of difference in that back line. Really, you know, he gives you something different that other, other players don't have in that team. Um, and when when he plays, you know, there's another dimension I think to to Cardiff because 
he can do both you know he can be a distributor he can he's also got loads of power um and they just they just don't have that much um quality behind you know that that first 15 i don't think that's really beginning to show now so again another team that is just i think ready for the season to be over start again next year which is a shame just, it's a um, shame thing to say but it's just just before we so move on I've, I've a question for you shanks you touched on it or maybe it was john about um like the second row or the front row you know need to get bigger lads you know need more muscle up front but like every team in the french league the urc the gallagher premiership they're looking for the biggest second row the best second rows they're looking for the biggest front rows you look at the teams that are leading the way in the top 14 la rochelle toulouse bordeaux you know and then you look at in the urc with with leinster and the sharks coming up with pecking order the stormers really good set piece are we looking at is, is the game changing back to uh, more of a par game once again like because the last few weeks when it's come to the crunch in these big games it seems to be the more physical bigger men are, are generally coming out on top and everybody's screaming at me saying oh leinster are going to walk the european cup and leinster are going to walk you know this mm -hmm. and the other but I, i'm not so sure because they don't have huge huge power like some of the other teams so it's just, it's just you can always question. rely you can always rely on power can't you you can always rely yeah. on it you know it, it's not but something you know, that Sorry, Sean, okay. if, if you don't have power and you can't and you don't have accuracy, like you look at Lenser, they don't make mistakes. That's the difference. And you can see yeah. they're they know exactly what they're doing. The other teams, they're they're not as accurate with the ball. So you do that and you don't have power, you're dead. And I, I genuinely think that but then you look at yeah, you're right. You look at the Sharks game, we'll get on to that in a second. I'm sure uh, you know, you look at the Stormers, the like the South African teams playing on you know dry ground, I keep saying it, they're absolutely monstering teams up front. Yeah, yeah. Power is always something you can fall back on, isn't it? You know, if if you're not functioning and face play, if if back moves aren't working, or you know something's going wrong, you can always just fall fall back on just picking and going, keeping it short, so, using the power runners, getting over the game line. So Cardiff Shanks, would they be in a position to be able to sign big, you know, um, guys that everybody else are looking for that's going to be earning good good money, like? It, are they yeah, in a well, they're gonna to have do to, that if, if, if other lads are taking pay cuts. They're gonna, if you want big players like that, you have to go over the odds, especially for a team that isn't winning, you know, because a lot of the you know, the Leinsters, the Munsters, um, sometimes the Ulsters are, are the teams <laughs> are the teams that would attract the big name players because you've got more of a chance of, of winning silverware. So, if you want players, big name players to come to your club, you've got to pay them more than what they're probably worth. Um, and clubs always say they got no money, but then all of a sudden, you know, yeah, you yeah. sign Jonah Lomu and, and you found money from somewhere. So, <laughs> and it's always clubs always say they got no money, and then all of a sudden they found some money somewhere. Oh, I was, I was just, it was under the rug, so I didn't have to go like that. And they, and they signed so I don't know, mate. Like, but if, if they want to, if they want to compete, I think they need some big signings and more so yeah. in that type five. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, but big name players in the Sharks Lancer game. Um, unbelievable game. Like I know there's a bit of a young squad as one out, especially with Leinster fighting on both fronts, European and the URC. But a lot of these young Leinster lads playing well. Jimmy O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, you know, exceptional. Uh, but like the Sharks, you know, Banambi again up front. We're talking about, you know, the power that they have up front. They're now in the mm. fourth. Where there were miles down the league, you know, again six eight weeks ago, I don't think any team's going to be wanting to go to Durban to play uh, a knockout game. So like they're they're definitely making hitting their straps. Um, Lancer got off to a fantastic start, you know, seventeen one up at half time, and then the grit determination of the of the Sharks, Lancer a couple of yellow cards went down to thirteen men at a stage, but you got to fancy the Sharks to to possibly keep themselves in the top four, surely. Yeah, all I mean, yeah. all I'll say is, oh, look at the scrums. Like, yeah. oh yeah. my God. I watched it back and every scrum was like a manhandling. It was like small children playing against like like giants. And this is Leinster, not like not like an average team. Well drilled, well coached. And the power they have in Inch, in Manambi, Detoy, you go into their back row. It's, yeah. 
that you say you can't see teams going there and beating them at the moment. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's Leinster, but typical Leinster, 17 7 up and didn't re- not on the balance of play. And they could have won it right at the death as well. But yeah, yeah, yeah you go, you go through the, the, the you go through the South African teams, especially the Sharks and Stormers, and the, the way they're playing, the confidence they have, being back at home, the crowds are coming back. It's mm-hmm. all kind of aligning for them now. It's been a massive reality check, I think, for a lot of teams going out to South Africa. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and this was a great gauge because you've got one of the the best teams in Europe. But I know it's not full strength, but they're still Leinster and they still win more than they lose. Um, and all of a sudden, now you're thinking, right, that South Africa, this is a tough place to go and win. But Connacht did it. Yeah, Connacht did How, it. I, I don't know. That was the I, biggest but... shock. That was the bigger shock, but there's also another shock that um, the TMO has been swapped for this weekend's Leinster game versus the Stormers. Um, big talking point again. Ulster during the season against the Stormers, there was a dodgy TMO decision, and yet again in the TLC Sharks game here, another controversial decision. Like it's just so frustrating. This is, this has been my rant of the week. Is like the TMOs. Which legs his? I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> They're both his shanks. <laughs> so, but like, it, it's just so frustrating uh, as a fan to see the TMO getting the decisions wrong. And it's a bit like that knock on in the Dragons yeah. game. Like, why can't they just go? Oh, hold on a second. It was a knock on. Bring it back. <laughs> like, what? What is the reason for this? Why can't they just get it right? Jelly babies or something. Oh, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Play on. It's good try. Yeah, go on, lads. Good try. Yeah, <laughs> very frustrating. No, I, I, anyway. no, I, I, I get it. I get I it. Know, yeah, there's only so many times we're going to ask and ask the question. They're obvious oh, well, as well. They're all rubbish. It's, yeah. it, it's it's funny that the, the TMO has been swapped for the, for this weekend against Stormer. So uh, obviously somebody's kicked up a bit of a. A storm in there. The Lions, obviously, kind of beating the Lions, as you said. And the Bulls, um, convincing enough victory, 46-29 against Benetton. Um, and, yeah, Shanks, you briefly talked about the Shields. You're hopeful yeah. of the Scarlets. Do you reckon the Ospreys can can run them close for the for that big game this we weekend? Talk about, mate, in Wales. It's all we got to talk about in Wales is the Shield. Yeah, it is. That's it. No yeah, top and you eight, get a tro- you get a trophy for winning winning it as well. Did you know that? <laughs> do, you, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, there we are. Some silverware this year then for <laughs> um, Yeah, th- this is why this is why Scarlet Ospreys is is a massive game. Like it's a huge game for for where you know in, in terms of the country Wales this weekend because Scarlet's um, got two games left. Ospreys got three games left. Um, they're nine points behind. You know, if the Ospreys win with a bonus point, that makes it four points. And then the Ospreys have got Dragons home and Bulls home, so two home games. Um, and the Scarlets have got after this game's um, Stormers home. So yeah, uh, could go either way. At the moment, you have to say it's probably in the Scarlets' hands. But I mean, the Ospreys. We'll be going into it with a bit of confidence after being in Cardiff last week. Weather dependent, I think, as well. Like the Ospreys will prefer the sort of colder, wetter conditions. The Scarlets love playing sort of in the wide channels with a high tempo game. They, they always have so huge game, huge game. I think the Ospreys will probably probably just pip them this weekend, and it's going to come down to the last two. So. And but you need, eight, need to pick up bonus points. Yeah, top, top eight. eight. We, give, we give our predictions there, what, two weeks ago about who would finish in the top eight. I think we all give the same eight teams. It was just slightly yeah. different of where they were going to finish. Obviously, Lens are going to finish on top. But the home the home quarter final thing is absolutely massive. Like, if Ulster sneak in, they get a couple of points, and then the next thing they're away to Stormers or away to Sharks. Like, I wouldn't be giving them much hope. But... It's uh, it's such an advantage, isn't it? A home quarter final, um, especially when it's just a one-off game. Imagine the travel oh, to uh, imagine having to travel to to Cape Town for a week, and then you got you know the next week you got to travel home and, and play, like and that's what Bob said to me in commentary. He said that they'll fill this place out for a quarter final, semi final, and it'd be unbelievable. The team's got to travel, long travel over there. It's only going to yeah. get hotter, I think. It'd be <laughs> so. Well, there's yeah. also uh, I heard there 
from a source within Ulster Rugby is the financial implications. Like, so obviously, Ulster, they don't make the top four, then they're missing out in gate revenue, they're missing out in merchandise sales, they're missing, they have to then probably fund a bit of their own travel or, you know, bring their own nutritionists or, you know, extra people that they want to have. So, like, it could be the case of a couple of hundred thousand difference from a home and an away quarterfinal. So, yeah. um, that's 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 a huge thing to, to look out for. But I think we all agree that um, Stormers and Leinster should find themselves with a with a home quarterfinal, and the rest of the the teams are, are trying to fight for that. The other two places. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't like exciting, I'm, not being, I'm not being horrible, Stevie, but I, I can I can see Ulster slipping down with the running they've got. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it like honestly, John, the confidence seems absolutely shot and. Like this is where the coaches are in their corn their corn. Like they really need to get on top of the players. Um like just anybody you speak to are jumping all over Ulster and oh we were brilliant three months ago. We were, you know, beating Leinster home and away, and now all of a sudden we you know we're, we're switch off for 40 minutes and we're 17 points down a monster. And I'm like, it's all about peaking at the right times uh, and something that's been very consistent in the Ulster game for the last decade is that um you know when the going gets tough they seem to slip away so we'll see what they're made of this weekend it's obviously a huge yeah. game against edinburgh john we'll be there but any rants from the weekend lads any get under your tmos skin? tmos hammered again yeah <laughs> so hammer them again basic Crap. basic basic um infringements of decisions they just cut they're not picking them up i don't know why that's all right. Why. Presenters, presenters' choice. Then we'll move on. Yeah. What have we got? What have we got this week, Gav? What would you be if you weren't a rugby player? Favorite TV show ever? Your go-to karaoke song? Mm. Take whatever you want, lads. Oh, can answer. But can answer more pretty quickly, couldn't you? My stories there. Well, go for it, John. What would you be if you weren't a rugby player? Uh, I said quickly. I was going to go and study medicine. <laughs> it's a bit boring. I was going to go and study medicine, and then I thought I'd take a year out. And then, seventeen years later, didn't get back to uni. Went to one lecture, and then canned it. <laughs> yeah. Worked it. Worked out. Worked out. Yeah, it worked out. It worked out not bad. Uh, karaoke song. Um, Shallow from Star Is Born. <laughs> I, I, I love everyone singing. <laughs> I do Lady Gaga. All together but... now. All together now. Come on. <laughs> that's me, mate. Or Crocodile Rock by Ellen John. One of the two. Oh, yeah. That's a better one. That's a better what one. would you be, Shanks, if you weren't, if you didn't play rugby? I'd probably be like a, a PE teacher. Or... <laughs> <laughs> that's the old Peter Crowd. Still am. <laughs> Still am. Uh, I'd be like a teacher. I'd probably would join the army. Really? Yeah. I thought it was a joke here. I'm not being serious. No, no. I think I'll be bloody good at it as well. Um, what about you, Stevie? What would you have been? Um, I probably would have been like, so I labored a lot for like in the building trade when I was um, 17, 18. So I'd say I'd probably have went into that plumbing, joinery, something along those lines. So. Probably oh, you'd a be great, team. like under a sink, wouldn't you? <laughs> Good knees for it. Good ankles for it. Like that. I'm trying to get under a we need, sink. Uh, we need Philip. We need Philip for that. We need Philip for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was the other question? Favorite TV uh, series? Oh. No. <laughs> Favorite song. Uh, what, what song would you sing, Shanks? Um, what song would I sing? I sing anything, mate. Um. Singing anything, I know she's like the wind. Patrick Swayze, Dave dancing. <laughs> Give us a rendition there. Um, she's like the wind, just a fool to believe, just a fool to believe. She's like the wind. You're not, you're not seeing it, boys. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, oh, favorite yeah. TV uh, series. Anyway, <laughs> on 24. Favorite TV series. 24. 24 back in the day. 
Yeah, Breaking Bad's pretty good and anything Eminem uh, for me. But on Shanks, terrible note. Um, no, what was, your, what was your karaoke song? You didn't say. Um, anything with Eminem. Oh, oh you rap. did. You have a rap, yeah. Come on then. Yeah, I'll have a bit of a rap. Three to the one, from the one to the three. You like good. I can't say oh, anymore. He puts the voice on as well. That's it. Yeah, he does. I like it. Um, yeah, so that's about it. But we'll, we'll close the show up, lads. Um, thank you so much for your time, as always, John. I look forward to catching up on Saturday. Shanks, are you working any games this weekend? Mm, yes, the Osprey Scarlets. With okay, well. The holster, Sean Holly. Sean Holly, the smooth operator that is Sean Holly. Mm. Um, well, here, enjoy, lads. I'll catch you at the weekend. Um, everyone, don't forget to give and watch all the action on Premier Sports every minute of every game of the URC. And we'll be back next week with some more thoughts on the URC. Cheers, lads. Cheers, boys. Bye-bye.